opponent in a row, having lost to Houston here just a few days ago. That game, another five-point game, again, where Cincinnati was in it down the stretch, much like they have been in every conference game so far this year. As Cincinnati wins the draw, they're in their white uniforms at 15-8 and eight overall. Day Day Thomas starts at the point guard position, and then we'll see Jizzle James flex in off the bench. Foul on the first possession of the game against Cincinnati and we have a player for Iowa State shaken up a little bit That's Keyshawn Gilbert the team's leading scorer at 14 points per game well, This is such a physical lead both of these teams set hard screens they come to the glass You've got to play with a ton of toughness. It's a war every night in the Big 12 Fouls on Aziz Bandego as we take a look at the Iowa State starting lineup. They're 18 and 5 overall wins against Houston and Kansas this year. Again, having won five of their last six. Trey King, the senior, driving in with the left hand. An offensive rebound and a putback for Robert Jones. The rebounding is going to be huge for who determining who wins this game tonight. Well, Cincinnati has to win the boards if they want to win this game. Cincinnati 10th in the country as you see their lineup here in rebounding margin plus nine on the year and after the foul on Aziz Bandego in the first possession for Cincinnati now the turnover as Day-Day Thomas lost it out of bounds and just it's what your keys to the game for the Bearcats as they trail down a bucket here well, Wes Miller told us they can't just win the boards they have to dominate the glass and if you're Iowa State, you have to block out, but you also have to protect the pay because Cincinnati will ram it down your throat. They're going to get inside Iowa State. They're going to pack it in, make them shoot threes. If you're Cincinnati, you got to limit the turnovers. Iowa State turns you over 16 times a game with 11 steals. And look, we already said it, dominate the glass. Second offensive rebound for Robert Jones underneath. This three-pointer is John Newman. Dribbles it up the court, coming off his first double-double performance since 2019. So he had 10 points, 10 rebounds in the loss against Houston. Two very good defensive teams. Iowa State, number one scoring defense in the conference, holding opponents to 62 points per game. As a travel called on Bandago in the third turnover against Cincinnati here early. As TJ Otzelberger in his third season. It's been a couple years at UNLV, but this is a bit of a homecoming for him. A long-time assistant in Ames and is looking to get his team back to the NCAA tournament for the third year in a row. Well, they're in a really good spot right here, not just to get back to the tournament, but to win this league, and that's what they're thinking about. Good drive, good finish. Keyshawn Gilbert shaking up on the first play of that game. Doesn't seem like there's any ill effects. As he was grimacing with that shoulder after the first foul of the game. Lucocious nowhere to go. Good defense. And trapping the low post, something that Iowa State likes to do as Lockin got caught, but a whistle against the Cyclones. Here's Wes Miller, also in his third season, came over after 10 years at UNC Greensboro. This is the first year for Cincinnati in the Big 12 Conference. And can't state it enough, Jess, but this team has been in every single conference game despite their four and six conference records. They're running out of time, but not opportunities. They've been competitive every single night, but at some point, you have to win a game like this. They weren't able to get Houston. Iowa State, a top 10 team in the country. This is one they've got to have. Dede Thomas, good crossover and a finish for the Juco transfer. First bucket of the game for the Bearcats. And there's Thomas, one of the best perimeter defenders in the country. Picking the pocket, now Dan Skillings, who comes off the bench for Cincinnati despite being their leading scorer at 12 points per game. Thomas lost it, another turnover on the Bearcats. Their fourth turnover leads to the runout. Robert Jones having a nice start to this one. The Cyclones, one of the best defensive teams in all the land. They bring it on the road. They will swarm around the basketball. That's way too weak for the point guard. If you're going to take it inside, you have to grip it and protect it, or the Cyclones are going to get out and run. Cincinnati just no stranger to these slow starts, similar to what happened in the game against Houston the other day, where they trailed by as many as 13. 
And at one point, Houston in the first half was out rebounding Cincinnati 11 to 1 in that game as the shot clock nears its expiration and Newman throws it out of bounds. You know, it's one thing to watch tape against the Cyclones, it's another thing to come out and play against them. It's the ultimate compliment for TJ Otzelberger and company. They make you hate the game of basketball. Nothing works, they take away the passing lanes, you think you have a layup, and they take that out of there as well. When you haven't played against them before, how long is that adjustment period? Uh, it's really difficult, maybe a couple minutes in, but what you have to do against them is you have to use their momentum against them. You have to swing the basketball side to side, match their physicality. If you just take quick shots or try to attack on the first or second pass, it's going to be a long night. Already five turnovers yeah. for Cincinnati. Make that is six. number six. Day-Day Thomas in no man's land and some early boo birds here at Fifth Third Arena. Skilling saves it from going out of bounds. Good steal. As Lukosius the other way. Seamoss Lukosius finishes at the rim for the Bearcats. Well, that's a great sign. If you can't score in the half court, you've got to force your own turnovers and get out and score in transition. Two-man game as Hassan Ward tries to go inside, and Aziz Bandego is there. Makes the rejection, and Newman the other way now for Cincinnati. It'll be Cincinnati basketball underneath when we return. 15.09 to go here in the first half. Iowa State on top, 6-4. To early, getting out-rebounded, out-hustled by Houston early. Cincinnati ended up leading at the half despite all of that and had a chance to win down the stretch. That's what they've been doing all season long. When you watch them on tape and you don't know their record, you think they're one of the best teams in the league. This is a team that is so intriguing. Their net ranking is holding in there. They are deep. They've got toughness. They've lost so many close games. They're in trouble again in the corner, but at some point they've got to win one of these games. Joe Lenardi, first four out. This would get him automatically in. So Jizzle James, who comes in to replace Day Day Thomas, trapped in the corner. Held ball possession arrow in favor of Iowa State. Essentially another turnover there. Number seven for Cincinnati. Trap defense on the baseline, giving the Bearcats fits. Here's Curtis Jones trying to float it over Bandago. Disrupted and Skillings comes down with it. Curtis Jones has been really good in the last six games. 14 points per game. Hit three threes against TCU. Lukosius caught in the trap. Spinning out of trouble. Another turnover on Cincinnati. That's number eight. Chilovich to Jones. Great ball movement. The transfer from Buffalo. Curtis Jones missing the three as Iowa State now 0 for 3 in that department. Ball can't stick. You've got to move it side to side. Get into your rotations, get into the flow, and then work your ball screen. There's a nice skip pass. Skillings in the corner. And Dago flying in, could not reel it in. That's two for his last 11 from beyond the arc. So Skillings, as athletic as he is getting to the rim, he's got to step up and hit those open threes. They're rare against Iowa State. Turnover on Iowa State. Skillings has been taking more and more three-pointers as the season has gone on. His last four games, he's been averaging six three-point attempts per, and maybe that's because we've talked about all season long with the Bearcats not having C.J. Frederick, who's been their best three-point shooter. He did come back after missing ten games to play two minutes in the game against Houston the other day, and he checks into the game now. We'll see how long he goes, still dealing with the recovery from that uh, hamstring injury that kept him out for so long. He could be a major factor in this game because you can't collapse as a defense when he's around one of the top assassins in the country. It's just a matter of getting his legs back and his win back. But you can see right now, Iowa State staying with C.J. Frederick. Reynolds also checking in with Frederick. We'll go to the free throw line. Frederick, a 44% three-point shooter in the games he has played for the Bearcats after transferring over from stints at Iowa and Kentucky. So Reynolds 
at the free throw line. Free throws have been an issue for Cincinnati this year. They've gotten better as of late, but down the stretch in clutch situations, they've faltered at the free throw line. Worst in the conference in free throw percentage. It's cost them a lot of games. And you can see the numbers right there with all the close battles that they've been in as hard as they've worked They step up to the line are not able to hit them But against Texas Tech 10 of 10 from the line and that was the difference and that was a massive win on the road And you saw how good Texas Tech was Big win against Tech in Lubbock for six now they also won in Provo against BYU for another conference road victory against the ranked opponent Robert Jones, this Iowa State team talks about the energy he brings, only averaging eight points per game on the season, but already has six here in this one. A little floater by Jones, end of the three and a half minute scoreless drought for Iowa State. Is it James a deep three? Knocks it down. He's only attempted two threes in his last four games, so that is a tremendous side, especially with his explosive ability getting to the rim. Freshman son of NFL Hall of Famer Edgerin James ties it up at eight. Oh, and had one. A perfect position for a steal. He just couldn't hang on to it. And that turned around and fouls Tame and Lipsy. Vizzle James, so we talk about him being a major factor in this game. And look, you're supposed to go under the screen on him. That's good defense by Lipsy. But James says, look, I'm confident. I'm going to rise up and make this happen. And if Cincinnati starts shooting the ball better, you mentioned the free throws, they're a completely different team. And they feel like they can beat anybody in this league. For Iowa State now with Lipsy at the free throw line. I know you're really high on his ability, not only offensively, but defensively as well. One of the best two-way guards in the country. And you just love to coach guys who will do it at both ends. He has a tremendous resume. What I love the most about him, 20% from three last year. Was a major liability in the month of February at the offensive end. Lives in the gym over the summer. Now has it up to around 40%. Just a great example for young guards. It is hard to find your shot once you get to this level and he's figured it out local kid out of Ames by Ames High School former Iowa Mr. Basketball in his second year with the Cyclones here's CJ Frederick seven on the shot clock for Jizzle James Newman was calling for it a lot of dribbling two to shoot all kicked around and a shot clock violation on the Bearcats Turnover number nine on Cincinnati. Never good to have more turnovers than points, but that's what's going on. Can be your best. Eight out of Iowa State's ten points have come in the paint. They're working the ball around. Good motion around their point guard, Lipsy. And this is a team, Jess, you look up and down the lineup, it, there's not one name that maybe scares you a ton offensively. It's just really good team basketball, and there's multiple guys that can hurt you in multiple different ways. So that's what's been so exciting for Cyclone fans over the last month is to see Lipsy gets right in the eye. But everybody, including the guys coming off the bench, have stepped up and contributed. And in this league, you have to have everybody. Here's Lipsy again. You talk about drawing a crowd, and he bullies his way in there, and yeah, gets scraped across the face. I believe if Dan Skillings was in the uh, Three Stooges, it would be... <laughs> to go here in the first half. Cincinnati, Eric Roth and Jeff Settle is here with you. Iowa State on the road, having won five of their last six. Have not hit a three-pointer yet in this game. They're now 0 for 4 after that Lipsy miss, despite being the second-best three-point shoot, three shooting team by percentage in the conference at 39% per game. It's just great defense by Cincinnati. They worked on defending that very baseline play in practice. And there's a, another double team, a jump ball. If you're Cincinnati, this is one of the major points of emphasis in this game. You're going to get doubled every time the ball comes to the post, whether it's a big or a small. And look where the double comes from. It's probably coming from underneath. That's what they do. They always send the double from underneath. You don't know it's coming, and it makes life miserable when you're down on the post. It's Frederick inbound. Is, is it a matter of Cincinnati just not getting rid of the ball quick enough? 
as Jamil Reynolds muscles that one up and in. Absolutely. You have to make quick decisions, and big guys don't want to make quick decisions. They want to crab dribble, take their time, and go up for a shot. Now, Houston did a good job against them. They handled that pretty well, but Iowa State, this is how they make a living, doubling everybody, no matter who has it. Good move by Lipsy. Floater off the glass as he beat his man off the dribble. And Lipsy now with four points. Get some good minutes here from Jamil Reynolds with Bandago on the bench. Frederick has not had a field goal opportunity yet. So they've got to run some staggers for CJ to get him an open look. Second three-pointer of the game for Chisel James to give the Bearcats a one-point lead. Gilbert caught in midair finds King for three. Iowa State now 0 for 5 from three-point land. James is feeling it, looking for more. Head up as he dribbles it down the court. A true freshman from Orlando, Florida finds Frederick, the veteran, and Victor Lockett lost it out of bounds. Turnover number 10 on Cincinnati. Look at Cincinnati shooting at home much better. However, in conference play, they struggled from three this year, under 30% in Big 12 games. They don't score a ton, under 70 points per game in conference play, but they stay within themselves defensively, and they've held some of the best offenses in this country to their lowest totals this year. But right now, they need to figure out Tame and Lipsy on the offensive end. Well, when you put in the time over the summer, and you get all the distractions out of your life, and you live in the gym, good things usually happen when the season starts. That's what Lipsy's done. Lipsy's got six second opportunity here after the offensive rebound and a head check foul on the Cyclones. Officials in this game, Keith Kimball, Gary Maxwell, and Tony Chiazzo. Cincinnati's got to find a way to get C.J. Frederick a couple stagger screens, a pin down, something that he can come off of, even if he has to force one. He's got to find a way to get his rhythm back and get back into the season. A brutal hamstring injuries hindered him, but he can still light it up. There's 10 games with that hamstring play. Two minutes in his return against Houston. The lob inside Bandago. Unable to finish. Lockett falling to the ground. No. Bandago swats it out to Skillings. And a whistle will send Skillings to the line, but he is hurt. And quickly back on his feet. They're running that high ball screen action. They love to throw that lob. And that's Cincinnati basketball. Toughness, hanging around the rim, cleaning up the offensive boards. Here it Houston. comes. You got to finish that. But that is the toughness that they're looking for. Great job attacking, an obvious foul. You got to step up to the line and make these free throws. Second foul on Trey King. And coming up at 9 Eastern over on ESPN. We'll take you to Rupp Arena for Antonio Reeves at number 22, Kentucky, hosting Ole Miss. Game starts at 9 over on ESPN. Skillings missing the second free throw attempt. Four team fouls on Iowa State, three on Cincinnati. by Dede Thomas, who just checked in. As he has been swapping places with Jizzle James every few minutes or so. And now Lukos just checks in for Dan Skillings to round out the Cincinnati Five on the floor. It's like whoever gets to 61st is going to win this game, right? <laughs> I don't know, maybe 55. Right? Curtis Jones off balance. Lipsy left alone. Lipsy makes a pay. Nine points for Taman Lipsy here in the first half. Well, if you're Day Day Thomas, the scouting report is you have to close out on him. You can't turn your back on a great shooter like number three. Corner of the game for Iowa State. Frederick's thought about it. Instead, gives it up to Lucius, who responds for the Bearcats. Well, he has guard skills. And with the game on the line, he's the one they like to go through. So such a tremendous sign to see the Bearcats knocking down three-point shots. It's going to open up their pick-and-roll action. They are a team that struggles in the half-court to score some nights. And it's nice to see those shots fall. 
Lipsy has scored the last nine for Iowa State. He has it in the corner under eight minutes to go here in the first half. Gilbert, their leading scorer. He's been quiet. Maybe that'll get him going. Good take. Finishing against the contact. Just four out of his last 15 before that shot. He can fill it up. Only one out of his last seven from beyond the arc. But the thing you love about him, he doesn't force it. He makes everybody better. If it's not his night, he'll move it on. Four points, two of two shooting for Keyshawn Gilbert. Frederick's got five to shoot, trying to lob it inside. Four on the shot clock. Lock it, lost it, fighting for it. Have to let it go. Frederick for three. They'll review it, but what a return bucket that would be for C.J. Frederick. Well, maybe for C.J. Frederick's going to have to wait. It's nice to see one go down. I mean, he needed to get an open look, and yes, that doesn't count. But psychologically, that was a win. Lukosius has a three. James has a couple threes. When they're knocking in their shots, they can play with anybody. And they got 11 turnovers, but you're only a bucket out of the lead, so you can take a positive out of that. Robert Jones, tough angle off the glass, and, and Iowa State has only had three players score. Jones has eight, Gilbert has four, and Lipsy has nine. Robert is so impressive. Alley-oop attempt thwarted by Jones, but a foul called on him. Dingo should be going to the free throw line here. 6.35 to go in the opening half. Second foul on Robert Jones. Iowa State is going to pack it in. They made it clear they're going to make Cincinnati prove that they can hit three-point shots. So once you start hitting those three-point shots, then all of a sudden defensively you have to come out another foot or two. What does that lead to? It opens up the pick and roll, gives you more room around the rim without defenders tagging on the opposite side. The problem is you get the foul, the play works, and you go up to the line and you miss the free throws. And speaking of that low post effort for both of these teams, a little surprising here, Jess, that Cincinnati out rebounding Iowa State 11 to 4 here early. I, excuse me, Cincinnati, a very good rebounding team, one of the best in the country, but that's a pretty wide margin for a very good rebounding team in Iowa State. It really is, and Wes Miller just said, hey, we, we, we have to dominate the glass. We yeah. can't just win the glass, and they were humbled in that first half against Houston. Houston came out and just cleaned up the glass, up 11-1 to 1 on the boards at one time, 17 offensive rebounds. That's just not Cincinnati basketball. You see the rebounding statistics for the Bearcats this year. This shot was deflected. Reynolds, the block, but it was Hassan Ward on the second effort. To muscle it up and in the fourth cyclone to record a bucket in this one. Iowa State back up by five. Ward is so bouncy. Keep your eye on 24. He can guard two through five defensively. Look at that. He can switch on the guards. Reynolds trying to muscle his way in. Skilling's there to clean it up. Good play defensively by Demarion Watson, but Skilling's right place, right time. Whistle up top as Hassan Ward was bumped. In the first foul on John Newman. We have not said his name a whole lot in this one. Newman, probably the best defensive player for the Bearcats, but much improved this year offensively. His last seven games, averaging 13 points per zero points so far in this one. Well, he's been sensational, but he's chasing around Mochilovic. And just look at the defense. Watch those two off the ball. Here it is right here. They're going to ice that and force him to the baseline. John Newman, one of the best in the business. And he forced that turnover, and here he comes. Lukosius got a hand on it. Now Lukosius the other way. Whistle again against the Cyclones. And Simos Lukosius to the free throw line. John Newman, underrated defensively around the country. He will do whatever it takes to win games. His offense has exploded. Held Pop Isaacs to 5 of 19 from the floor in that huge road win. And now he's given 22 the business. 
I'm glad you mentioned that, Jess, because you look at this Iowa State team, and Momchilovic is the best three-point shooter that Iowa State has, 40% of the year. In fact, 50% of his field goal attempts are from three. So what does Wes Miller do? He puts John Newman on him, says, let's not let Iowa State beat us by three uh, from the three-point line. And what's Momchilovic have tonight? 0 for 2, 0 points. Great call, partner. And in practice today, Iowa State was running staggers to try to get Milan open shots. The only problem is John Newman refuses to be screened. <laughs> That's right. Wow, look at him. I mean, he has just totally changed the momentum of this game without taking a shot. Those are the type of guys you love to coach. Defensive intensity by Newman as Jizzle James back out on the floor for Cincinnati. 11 turnovers on the Bearcats. Despite that, only down by one. We're in the five-minute mark here in the first half. Eric Rolfman just settles with you at Fifth Third Arena. Lukosius off the screen. Skilling's an offensive rebound. Trying to fight through the double. Skilling's no. Oh, let's see the other way with his nine points. Three of four shooting as Iowa State has made five of the last seven from the floor. Lose it out of bounds, and it will stay with the Cyclones underneath. You have to be impressed with Skillings coming to the offensive glass. It hasn't produced a ton of fruit, but it's that energy and that effort. It becomes contagious. Skillings, who didn't start playing organized basketball till the ninth grade, which is incredible when you see his skill level. Just a sophomore here from this Cincinnati program. Tried to jump the passing lane there. Chilovich blocked by Skillings. Momchilovic again. Reynolds flies in for the rebound as Iowa State now one of seven from three-point range. Lukosius wrapped up and fouled by the Cyclones. That's the seventh foul on Iowa State to put Cincinnati in the bonus. It's the second time Cincinnati has blown up the play on the baseline out of bounds for Iowa State. Iowa State's so good at scoring out of those blob plays. They always add a new one every game, a new wrinkle, so you don't know what to expect. So Cincinnati spent a lot of time in practice walking through their schemes, and so far so good, they've been able to keep the Cyclones off the scoreboard with those baseline out of bounds plays. Now they get Lipsy off the floor with two fouls. So coming in is Jackson Pavlovsky, sophomore from Wisconsin. Lipsy has to sit down with those nine points. 4.19 to go here in the first half. As Lukosius at the free throw line, a chance to give Cincinnati a one point lead. Six nothing run for the Bearcats. Gilbert blocked by Reynolds. Gilbert keeps it alive with 15 to shoot, but Momchilovic throws it away. He's starting to get excited here. They're sell out at Pittsburgh Arena, over 12,000 fans in attendance. Still in his Knocked around, didn't really have a good handle on the ball when he shot that one. Now Gilbert the other way. Muscles it up into and over Lukosius. Great decision by Gilbert. Maybe not a high percentage look there on the break, but he knows his team struggling in the half court. And you've got to find a way in this game to come up with fast break points. 12 turnover on Cincinnati as Lukosius loses it out of bounds. Back and forth we go. Iowa State on top by one. 3.32 to go in the half. ESPN two points for Iowa State. What is Cincinnati doing to overcome the turnover deficit? Well, they've been playing great defense themselves. Iowa State only one of seven from beyond the arc. So there's a drought going there for the Cyclone. Give credit to the credit to the Bearcats. Nobody hates a drought more than a farmer and a basketball coach. <laughs> and you would know. There we go. Did you ride your deer over here from Iowa to Cincinnati? I got a few. Yeah, okay. I'm sure you do. <laughs> 
As Iowa State back up by three. You mentioned the three-point shooting for the Cyclones. 39% on the season team average. They're one of seven here in this one as Keyshawn Gilbert now has eight points for the Cyclones. Newman flying in, still scoreless. Van Dago gets the rebound, and he's fouled. I just love the effort by Newman. He puts his head down, takes the contact at the rim, no call. Doesn't hang his head, goes right back up. Bandego, he, excuse me, he gets it. These guys are coming to the boards. It's another reason they're able to overcome these turnovers. You talk about overcoming turnovers. It really hasn't been a deterrent this season for Cincinnati. You go back to the road victory against BYU. They won that game 71 to 60. And Cincinnati had a season high 13 first half turnovers in that game. Still able to win it by 11 on the road in Provo. This is just what Iowa State does to be. You're careless with the basketball. You're trying to feed the post. All of a sudden, they snatch it out of the end. Of course, 16 turnovers a game. They come up with 11 steals. So, nothing new for the Cyclone defense. But if you're Cincinnati, I mean, you've got to get that under control. You can't hang around if you're going to continue to give up the basketball in every other possession. Seven on the shot clock now for Pavletsky. Three to shoot, Gilbert, back to Pavletsky, one to let it fly. Somehow, Jackson Pavletsky, the former SoCon Freshman of the Year from Wofford, now a sophomore at Iowa State, they'll review it to see if it counts. That's really good defense by the Bearcats. It's just an incredible fadeaway three-point shot with somebody's hand in your face. Pavletsky who came in when Lipsy went out with those two fouls Huge bucket as the shot clock was expiring the Question is did it expire before the shot six nothing run now for Iowa State with 224 to go in the half Well, it's tough when you only play a handful of minutes every game It's tough to come in in big situations and make plays Pavletsky does just that Another turnover, number 13 on Cincinnati. Now, this is a big possession in this game. All right, you give up the basketball. Iowa State's got to make them pay. That's a pretty good look. Gilbert, gotcha crossover of the step back, misses the three. Now Day Day Thomas wants to push. Frederick two-man game with Lukosius airmails that one out of bounds He's adding now three for nine for the three-point range as Wes Miller arms crossed furrowed brow one of the more intense coaches You will find in the country played for Roy Williams North Carolina championship team As Bandego Cincinnati gets a turnover of their own Lukosius, no numbers for Cincinnati. Maybe the wise move would have been to reset there. Instead, now a foul against the Bearcats, and Iowa State has it with 1.30 to go in the half. You know, Lukosius had a split second to make that decision, and it, he just knew how tough it was for the Bearcats to score in the half court, and I think he thought the percentages were better to just take it up right there and try to conquer the double team. It's a foul on John Newman. That's his second. 15 foul on Cincinnati. They're gonna, try to, excuse me, they're gonna try to get Gilbert downhill here into the shot clock with a high ball screen. He's got to attack. There it is. Working against Day Day Thomas. Extra pass in the corner to Curtis Jones. And that one slips in as Curtis Jones gives Iowa State their largest lead of the game. Keyshawn Gilbert, they get the empty side. They get the ball screen. It's capped off by the three-pointer in the corner by Curtis Jones. Well, the Cyclones had 20 assists against TCU, and this is just what they do. Like Gilbert attacks, swings it around the perimeter. A lot of guys would have just thrown that up off the glass and hoped it went in. He knew there was a better shot out there. As good as their defense is, their passing has been just as good. Oh, my. 14th turnover on Cincinnati, their most and a half this season. Ward to the rack. 11-0 run for the Cyclones with 45 seconds to go in the half. What a 
coach Sean Farnham talk about the last time we went to the studio. Iowa State not taking advantage of those turnovers from the Bearcats. They're taking advantage now as Hayden Thomas stops the bleeding. 30 seconds to play. It's just unacceptable. This game means so much to Cincinnati, to this community. There's so much at stake. You cannot come down and be careless with the, with the basketball on every other play and try to conquer this defense on the first or second pass. That's what they want you to do. Final 10 seconds of the half. Shot clock off. Here's Gilbert. Curtis Jones short on the three. And that will end the half for Cincinnati as the Bearcats committed 14 turnovers and Iowa State made five of their last seven from the floor to close out the half. They lead it 34-26. Three of four shooting for Lipsy Sumas Lukosius. Nine points for Cincinnati. But the Bearcats, they need to get John Newman involved. He was scoreless in the first half. Victor Lockett scoreless in the first half. Dan Skillings Jr., three points in the first half. So they need their big players to step up if they want to come back from behind here for a much-needed home victory against number 10, Iowa State. As the Cyclones lose it out of bounds, their first possession of the second half. Well, the problem with all those turnovers is you don't get shot opportunities, which means you can't clean up the glass. Only 21 field goal attempts for the Bearcats, 31 for Iowa State. Houston took 18 more shots than they did the last game. You can't win turning the ball like over like that and not getting the equal amount of shots at the rim. Get to lock in this and turn around. That's a great point. We will talk about that Houston game. Cincinnati outshot 18 field goal attempts against Houston as Bandago had a hand on it, but. Trey King forces it in. I will say it's a hit point advantage. King spent some time on the bench in that first half. Just his first bucket of the game, averaging 10 on the season. And that is turnover number 15 for the Bearcats, right back to where they started in the first half. Only just so many self inflicted wounds, and at some point, it becomes a serious problem. But what about Taman Lipsy knowing that Trey King was not involved in this game? He could have taken a three, but he wanted to get his guy going. And now he takes the mid-range number. You cannot have a better basketball IQ start to a second half than number three. Lipsy's up to 11 now. The sophomore from Ames, Big 12, all freshman team a year ago. on The Naismith Defensive Player not of the Year work. watch this list. This doesn't work. And that's why one of the best stealers of the basketball. As he gets that one, and turnover number 16 now. As John Newman picks up his third foul. There really aren't many guards in this league who can just attack the entire Iowa State defense. Look at the help. Even if the ball was not stripped, that was going nowhere. Lipsy broke an Iowa State record with eight steals in a game against Prairie View A&M earlier this season. He also has a triple-double to his name this year, his sophomore campaign. A three-pointer in the corner for Keyshawn Gilbert, and everything going the Cyclones' way as they start three of three from the floor here in the second half. Second half, you see their scoring margin stats this year, fourth in Division One in scoring margin. And, and Jess, you look at it, well, you say Iowa State's number 10 in the country. Of course they should be blowing out a four and six Cincinnati team, but that's not the case. Cincinnati, according to Vegas, was favored in this game. Cincinnati has only not lost a game in conference play by more than five points. Nobody has done what Iowa State is doing here in this game after another turnover on the Bearcats. Nobody's been able to blow the Bearcats out. Well, there's still time for them to get back in it, but not if they're going to continue to give the ball up like that. It's unbelievable. I have not seen anything like this the whole year. 18 turnovers, three on one. Robert Jones spins nowhere. Loose ball, and Cincinnati lucky that back-to-back turnovers result in zero points for Iowa State. I'm not sure Big Rob Energy has that as our side. This the Vince Carter spin movie. Come on, Rob. I mean, you got to know your limitations. You talk about a kid who's improved so much. I mean, there were so many times last year where they didn't trust to go to him, but his screening is elite, and he rolls hard to the basket, drags two guys with him. But uh, he got caught in the air there, didn't know what to do with him. Cincinnati, 18 turnovers. Their season high was 19 at BYU. Iowa State has forced opponents to 20 or more turnovers six times this year. It's Chisel James. It's a much needed bucket. The first field goal for Cincinnati in the half. He is so good at that. 
putting on the brakes, pulling up, tacking to that mid-height jumper. That's what he's known for. Sean Gilbert, 11 points for the game. Chilovich still scoreless, 0 for 4 from the floor, despite his 13 points per game coming into this one. Fans wanted a walk on Gilbert, instead it's a missed 3 by Trey King. The Cyclones have to get back to that high ball screen action. they got to put Bandego in those ball screen situations. He's in drop coverage. You can attack him with the dribble or pull up with that little mid-range jumper. That looks like that one's going the other way. A little screen on Jamil Reynolds. It's his first. You have to give a guy a step. That's a moving screen. Easy call that far away from the basket. Let's see right now. You know, Jones is going to the bench. Well, and Reynolds, you saw there, Jess, was telling Jizzle James, you got to wait. You didn't wait until I got there. Great point. Point guard puts him in a tough situation right there. Jones back out there as well as Hassan Ward for the Cyclones. Iowa State 18 and 5 overall, 7 and 3 in conference, a game behind Houston in the Big 12 standings. And Dago rim protection as Skillings has it for the Bearcats. Iowa State having won five of their last six. Cincinnati lost three of their last five. Lukosius. And Reynolds, the offensive rebound, a foul on Trey King. The ball will stay with Cincinnati. It's the third foul on Trey King. Lipsy back in there. There's a smaller lineup now with Trey King going to the bench. James, eight points on three of three shooting for the Bearcats. Ten on the shot clock. They go inside to Reynolds, who draws the double. Five now to shoot. Lukosius, hand in his face, way short. Skilling's there, and the shot clock sounds. Great job by Cincinnati to pound the ball into Reynolds on the mismatch. But Ward, who we mentioned earlier, who can guard so many... NCAA championship team, an ABA championship team, and an NBA championship team. Was also the first black head coach in Cincinnati history, where he's a four-year head coach of the women's program here. And Tom, 84 years young, and hopefully watching this game, although I'm sure a little disappointed in his Bearcats. We're happy to honor him as part of black history always. 41-28 as Iowa State out of the break. Cincinnati, Jess, has turned the ball over on 50% of their possessions in this game. Well, this is a really good test for Jizzle James, right? You're still within striking distance. They have to clear him out, let him attack the paint. Maybe not even ball screen for him as much so he can have more space. And no space there. Drew right. the double team as Hassan Ward came over. That left Skillings open for the baseline drive. When you talk about a high percentage shot, he has a little Devin Booker in his game from the Phoenix Suns, and that gets the crowd partially on their feet. The first little bit of energy we've had in this building in a while. Three minute plus scoring drought for Iowa State. Skillings has five. Lipsy, no whistle, loose ball, batted around. Gilbert dishes it off to Ward for the easy finish. Jay Frederick back out on the court for Cincinnati as Lukosius has his shot blocked by Hassan Ward playing some good minutes for the Cyclones. Curtis Jones straight away three. The second triple for Curtis Jones in the ball game. Yeah, what a turn of events. You think you have a layup at one end, Ward erases that. You come down to the other end, you lose the shooter. Five-point swing. Six points for Jones, who's averaged 14 per game over his last six. Swing through. Skillings in the near corner. And Skillings starting to heat up here in the second half. 
Only had three points in the first. Five points now in the last two times he's touched the ball. Whoops, he finds the open man. Jones thought about it. And it will be a hand check foul on C.J. Frederick. We talked about the contributions by Ward. He just hangs around the rim, coming right into your living room. He does so much for his team, and that's the extra pass, the side-to-side -side ball movement that Cincinnati has to use to get back in this game. Cincinnati now 4 for 12 from 3. Iowa State 4 of 14 as Pavletsky back into the game. He has it for the Cyclones. Ripsey too strong on the three-point attempt. Some of the reserve big men for both of these teams, Jamil Reynolds, Hassan Ward, both playing good minutes. Skillings, he's trying to take over, Jess. You can see it in his eyes. Frederick, baseline, and one for C.J. Frederick, his first bucket since returning from that hamstring injury that kept him out 10 games. Such an aggressive move. He draws the defender because he's an elite three-point shooter, but those are the buckets he can add as well once he gets his legs back. Tough shot, gets hit on the elbow, and one. And this guy's almost automatic. As Frederick converts. See a 44% three-point shooter. That's where they need him the most. As Cincinnati within 10, their fans starting to make some noise. 13 minutes to go. Good hands by Chisel James. Stay with Iowa State out of bounds. 12 on the shot clock. Well, Chilovich checks in. Gilbert takes a seat. In a little touch shot just inside the free throw line for Curtis Jones. Jones now up to eight points, the lead back out to a dozen. Newman trapped, nowhere to go. Chisel James for three. Lipsy up ahead with a burst of speed. Robert Jones is playing a five-star game at the defensive end. Again, he just helps his guys out. He has the instinct. He closes off the lane and leads to a fast-break opportunity. Lipsy trying to sell a charge. Instead, it's a step-back three for Chisel James. Yeah, they've got to do a better job of getting him in open space. Don't bring the ball screen at him to tie him up. Just let him make one-on-one -on -one moves. His three-point shot looks beautiful tonight. We know what he can do going to the rim. Third three-pointer for James, who has 11 to lead all scorers for Cincinnati. Loose ball. Jones trying to keep it alive. Chisel has it. Slipping and sliding as he gets over the timeline. Now slows things down in the half court. Trying to cut the lead down to single digits. Curtis Jones the steal. Chisel just never seemed to have a handle on the basketball throughout that entire possession. And that's turnover number 21. One points for Iowa State off those turnovers. Foul up top will be on Curtis Jones as the crowd has quieted here. Iowa State on top, 52-39. T.J. Otzelberger, the Bill Belichick of college basketball. He takes away your best. I think I played against every one of those guys. <laughs> Well, the question is, my favorite wasn't even on that list right there. Boo Boo Paolo. There you go. My favorite Iowa State guard I mean, of all time. That's strong by you. <laughs> Damon Lipsy there. They have had elite guard play over the decades, and it's led to many championships. The one thing they need to get is a national title. And T.J. Otzelberger, I'm telling you, in the next three or four years, he's taking this program to the Final Four. He's that good. 
Thomas in and out. Whistle will stay with the Bearcats. I'm surprised with all the years you spent in college. I'm not sitting next to Dr. Jeff Settles. <laughs> hey, I, I did get a master's degree. <laughs> My wife has her PhD, but I probably should have gotten one. <laughs> uh, look at that. The hustle, the physicality, another turnover. It's hard to believe. 22nd on Cincinnati. That follows the third foul on Robert Jones. Nearing the midway point here in the second half. Just watch Iowa State use this shot clock and just wear this team down. And you can just feel the stunned silence every time Iowa State scores in this building. These Bearcat fans have sold out every game this year. They're not used to Cincinnati being in this type of position with 10 minutes to go in a game. Cincinnati four and six in conference play, but those six losses none has been by more than five points You got ten minutes to go you have to get stops at this end Again, we talked about them moving it side to side trying to get this Iowa State defense to rotate you can't conquer it early but with all the turnovers You're not even giving yourself an opportunity to get shots at the rim to get offensive rebounds Shot clock for Lipsy on the baseline. Curtis Jones has already hit a pair of threes today. Make it a turkey. Three triples for Curtis Jones. Skilling's the other way. Baseline. Play a little bit of hero ball. Lukosius for three after the pump fake. Lukosius, a much needed bucket for Cincinnati. Ends a three minute scoring drought. He's such a smooth operator. Great job. The shot fake slides to the left. Clears some space and knocks it in. Oh, points for Silas. Whistle, offensive foul as Ward used the shoulder to create space. All five Cyclones touch the ball. They're moving it side to side. Baseline penetration. I don't know how he saw an open teammate. And when you get a pass like that, you have to take advantage of it. Lipsy, tenacious defensively, makes everybody around him better. I really thought the first possession of the second half, when he comes out, has a wide open three, but knows Trey King is in a little bit of a funk. Needs to get him going. Decides to turn down the shot to get King an open look. And it's been contagious in the second half. Three assists for Lipsy in the game. He had ten assists in a triple-double performance against DePaul earlier this year. Nearly another turnover on Cincinnati, but Hassan Ward touched it out of bounds. I just love Hassan Ward. I, he knows his role. He stars in his role. And you get the power player in Jones, the physicality of King, and then Ward comes in, and he's so bouncing and he's so active, shows his hands. Those are the types of guys T.J. Otzelberger recruits. They buy into the system, and it pays huge dividends. He's not going to have a ton of buckets in this game, but right now he has his team in a position to win. Three on the shot clock. James lobs it up to Jameel Reynolds. KGB of Big 12 basketball this year. Hanging around, hanging around. Well, Chilovich scoreless in the game until now. Yeah, just more space for Jizzle. Yeah, clear it out, let him make things happen. Thought about a three there. Let's kick it out to Lukosius. Skilling's in the corner. Needed it. Dan Skillings has eight of his 11 points here in the second half. And he's got a double-double to boot, third of his career with 10 rebounds. Ward on Reynolds. 
Good play by Gilbert to throw it off of C.J. Frederick and keep possession with the Cyclones. Well, the open looks have been hard to come by for Cincinnati, but would you get them? Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. And if you're real, really a Big 12 fan, Jess, you can watch that USUCF BYU game on your tablet while you're watching Oklahoma Baylor on ESPN2. A battle of two top 25 Big 12 teams right after us here on ESPN2. And there you go. I just got your night at the hotel locked up for you. Room service and a couple Big 12 games for you, buddy. Well, you just can't miss a game on ESPN. You, <laughs> you'll miss plays like that in this league every single night. I mean, you've got 23 turnovers if you're the Bearcats. And you've got a chance to cut this to seven or eight points. That's amazing. Dan Skillings has really stepped up here in the second half. Here's Lukosius for three. Six and a half minutes to go in regulation. Eric Rothman just said we'll see with you. Fifth third arena in Cincinnati. Iowa State has won five in the last six, looking to match Houston's eight and three conference record atop the Big 12. Lipsy flips it up. No. Reynolds the rebound. Skillings on the outlet. Skillings fighting for it on his back. Gilbert dives. Lost it. Jizzle James for three. That will be a foul on Reynolds. Both teams playing so hard, rebounding a key. That's way off. And great job of blocking out, using the physicality, putting your body on the line. Free throw shooting huge for both teams down the stretch here. Both teams have struggled in that category. Iowa State's been able to get away with it more often than Cincinnati this year. But with six minutes to go, a pretty tight ball game. You've got to step up to the line and hit them. Got a couple good looks from three, but yeah. Lukosius and James can't hit. There's Lipsy now. The defense by the Bearcats. Five to shoot. Curtis Jones has been a three-point threat all game. He's got three of them. This time he drives, heaves it up, and somehow finds Pater. Curtis was in a precarious situation there. Clock running down. I think he wanted to pull up with that jumper, and he just floated up the hook shot. That was an extremely difficult shot and silences the crowd. A couple of end of shot clock plays for Iowa State in this one. Pavletsky in the first half, and now Curtis Jones here in the second, and it's an offensive foul called against Jizzle James, his second. Here's Lipsy. So difficult to challenge him. He moves his feet, takes the hit. I and mean, I've heard some guys, some analysts call him a pass, but he's a pit bull. I mean, this guy does whatever it takes to win, and he is so strong in his lower body. And another good decision right there to save a turnover. Takes a timeout, five fouls on both teams. Cincinnati fans not happy with the offensive foul against Jizzle James. Either way, it's Iowa State basketball. The end's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. Visit Progressive.com. Beautiful night here in Cincinnati. Fifth third arena packed yet again. As fans have really gotten behind the Bearcats joining the Big 12 this year. Tough place to play, but Iowa State undeterred so far. Eric Rothman just settles here with you. 59-47 the lead for the Cyclones. Here's Lipsy. Reynolds couldn't come down with it. Jones puts it up and in. John Newman needs to make a play here. Something that the defensive end or offensive an energy type of play to get his team going they're gonna have to start looking for threes now he can't dribble the air out of it move it side to side and strike quickly Skilling lost it going up and a whistle against Iowa State you mentioned Jess that Cincinnati needs threes and I think this speaks to the fact that CJ Frederick is still recovering from that injury because Cincinnati needs for threes and he's not out on the floor yeah he just doesn't have his legs under him you know, hopefully he's healthy. It looks like he's rubbing it right there, but he, he needs to be in this game if he's got any energy at all. They're going to have to hit some outside shots, make free throws, but they need to put their shooters in. 
Chris Skillings at the free throw line with 421 to go. Coming up at 9 Eastern over on ESPN, we'll take you to Rupp Arena for Antonio Reeves at number 22, Kentucky, hosting Ole Miss. Kentucky trying to avoid, I believe I heard Dallin Cuff say, their fourth straight loss. So that'll give you tonight, 9 Eastern on ESPN. Chilovic back into the game for the Cyclones. Josh Reed hustling to get in for the Bearcats. He has not been in the game at all up until now. So a defensive lineup yeah. here with Lukosius coming out. So Lipsy's got to handle this pressure. Good strategy by the Bearcats. A soft press there by the Bearcats. They back off as Curtis Jones walks it over the timeline. Back door, Gilbert can't finish. Newman calling for it in the corner, still scoreless in this game. Long skip pass, Lipsy there to take it away. You just can't make those type of plays against one of the best defenses in the country. That's what they thrive off of. 25 turnovers on Cincinnati. Three seconds to shoot. Curtis Jones off the mark on the three. Aziz Bandego, the rebound. We put back 25 years in the record books. 29 turnovers against Central Michigan in 2006 is the most we were able to find. Cincinnati coming up on some history that they don't want to be a part of. Down 61-49 here at home. These teams going to kind of the football mentality of an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator when it comes to assistant coaching. You've seen that pay off for the Cyclones, especially on the defensive end. Oh, yeah, in the past and, and still right now, most teams rotate the scouting reports through the assistant coaches. But Iowa State, Kyle Green is their defensive coordinator. And there's nobody better in the country of coming up with a plan. So he handles the defense for every game. And this has been a clinic at the defensive end against a team that was desperate. In Cincinnati. 25 turnovers for Cincinnati in the game. You're seeing the fingerprints of that defense here in this one. Just James got the tap in to pull Cincinnati within 10. And whistle. Cincinnati not happy about it. West Miller quite literally pulling his hair out. Now there's Kyle Green. I mean, all he thinks about is defense. And he doesn't have to handle the offense. And what he's done over the last couple years has really been spectacular. This year, they have the offense to match his defensive schemes. And this team, look, they, they're going to end up being a one or two seed with the way things are going. They've got an elite defense. Their offense continues to improve. If they make close shots and free throws, they're going to be a handle. Lipsy. Mm. Way to go for Keyshawn Gilbert. He was triple teamed. Somehow got out of it. Lipsy, the beneficiary with the assist there. 63-51 lead for Iowa State. Reynolds, who just picked up his third foul a moment ago. Skillings can't finish. Chisel James, no. Robert Jones, the rebound. Wes Miller, boy, he is furious. Furious with the referee. Also, I'm sure furious with the 25 turnover right. his team has. Two minutes to go here. Seven on the shot clock for Lipsy. That's a foul. Malchilovic close lining John Newman. What a college basketball Saturday we have for you on ESPN. Games tip off at noon Eastern with number nine Duke in Florida. That one's at 2 Eastern, and then it's number 6 Kansas and number 25 Oklahoma, followed by Kentucky and Auburn in the Sonic Blockbuster game. Should be another great afternoon of hoops on ESPN. Newman at the free throw line now with Iowa State 
committing their seventh team foul. Is somehow John Newman's first point of the game. Averaging 10 on the year, coming off a double double against Houston. He's averaged 13 points his last seven games. And just nothing going offensively here in this one for John. Well, this Iowa State defense, as good as they look on television and when you're studying tape, when you sit courtside and see how they rotate and the physicality they play with, it's one of the few teams in the country who put Houston in there as well. They take more pride in their defense than they do their offense. And a lot of teams say that, but these guys are so thrilled when they come up with a turnover or get a stop or blow up a play. That's the culture and identity that TJ Otzelberger has brought here in his third season. He took over a team that was 2-22 and 22 the year before he got there. What did he do in his first year? Took Iowa State to the Sweet 16. Unbelievable turnaround in just his third year at the helm after some years at South Dakota State, two years at UNLV, and it's a long-time assistant here at Iowa State returning home has made an impact right away. Back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances for the Cyclones under Coach Otz. Lukosius, a three-pointer. Now Cincinnati all of a sudden back within seven. 1.15 to go. The question is, is it too little too late? Gilbert lost it and a whistle. This three-point line is crazy. These games are never over until the horn goes off. And great job by Lukosius. We talked at the beginning how they go to him down the stretch. He's very crafty. Look at the pin down here against Jones. 41 comes up. Great follow through. That's exactly what they needed. Now the free throw competition begins. A minute eight to go. Iowa State has to knock him in. Cincinnati looking for open threes on the fast break. Iowa State has 15 less free throw attempts in this game than Cincinnati. UC is 12 for 17. Iowa State now 3 for 3 from the free throw line here in this one. Gilbert has had a nice game for Iowa State. 12 points after he misses that one on 5 of 13 shooting. Cincinnati has to make something happen here quick. The coach just lost it going up and will stay with the Bearcats just under a minute to go. I like the decision there by Lukosius. You don't want to launch a low percentage three. Put your shoulder down and at least try to get to the free throw line. Big out of bounds play here coming up. Long three from Lukosius. Curtis Jones on top of a loose ball. Ball's a timeout. Wes Miller is about to get teed up. He better be careful. They award Virginia, Oklahoma at home and then on the road in Orlando against UCF to close out the regular season. But a win here today for Coach Otts will improve Iowa State to 8 and 3 in conference. Same record as Houston atop the Big 12. Cincinnati, it's just, you can't overcome 25 turnovers. It's just nearly impossible. And as much credit as you give to the Cyclones defensively, and they were great tonight. But so many of those turnovers early were just Cincinnati guys trying to thread the needle, make a pass that's not there, being careless with the basketball. And, and Wes Miller, that's he talked about that so much today. He said, we're going to have some turnovers. But you didn't expect this. No, seven more turnovers that made field goals for Cincinnati in this game. Trey King at the free throw line. South Carolina women, the nation's only undefeated D1 team, highlight our ESPN Thursday basketball doubleheader as they square off against Rakia Jackson and the Lady Vols in Knoxville. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN. 
reminder that a couple top 25 teams will do battle in Waco, Texas right after this one here on ESPN2. Rich Hollenberg, Chris Patola will have the call for Oklahoma at Baylor. Continuation of our Super Tuesday presented by Progressive. Eric Rothman just settles here with you for the final 39 seconds of this one in Cincinnati. As it looks like Iowa State will improve to 19 and 5 overall. Cincinnati will fall to 15 and 9 overall, 4 and 7 in conference. Just James too strong. Turnover on Iowa State, their 11th in the ball game. Here's Jizzle in the corner. Hits the three with 24 seconds to go. 32nd time now back to a seven point advantage for the Cyclones. The illnesses, guys getting eligible in the middle of the season, and in this conference, you just can't heal. Every single night is a war, and Time is running out on this team. The opportunities will still be there, but everyone around here knew what was at stake the last couple games. Houston and Iowa State coming to your home court. They got to at least get one of those. Right now, Wes Miller just, his team could not overcome the turnovers. 20 seconds to go in Lipsy at the line. Looks like on this play a moment ago, Skilling kind of rolled his ankle a little bit. Uh, off the floor. Hopefully something minor. Skilling's stretching out the feet and the legs on the bench there for Cincinnati. So I'm just hoping that when we send it back to the studio, poor Sean Farnham has found his voice. I think the only time he's been speechless in his life when he's been devouring a flatbread. <laughs> Allen and Sean will get you set for Baylor in Oklahoma. Clock winds down on this one. And Iowa State will improve to 19 and 5 overall, the third year in a row for TJ Oxelberger with 19 or more wins. Now 8 and 3 in Big 12.